Okay. Um, last week during our interactive session, we could not do some cases that we had planned, epilepsy and driving as well as prostate cancer. So I'm making some videos now and I'll include these two cases in those videos. I'll do one case at a time and I'll be sharing them with you. So the first one I'm going to do today is prostate cancer. Now, prostate cancer is a very common topic in the exam. It can come as a history-taking case. It might come as a part of the physical examination and it might come as a counseling case as well. As a counseling case, it comes in different ways and I've tried to include all of the possible variations in today's discussion. Although in the slide, I'll be showing you just one of them, but I'll be talking about every possible variation and how to handle them. So let's talk about the possible variation. The first one is where the patient already knows that he has prostate cancer. So he has come to you to get more clarification about the diagnosis. The second case is patient has the results of the investigation but doesn't know that he has prostate cancer yet. So it's your responsibility to explain to the patient that he has prostate cancer. So in that case, you'll be using spike approach. The third variation is where the patient has prostate cancer Patient already knows prostate cancer and patient also has this urinary tract infection. So you will have one additional step for management. The fourth one is where the patient knows he has prostate cancer. Additional investigations, which means imaging studies for staging have already been done and they couldn't find any metastasis and um, the patient has urinary tract infection. So there can be a mix of these possible variations. The most important point for you to know is how to handle this in the exam according to uh, the information provided to you. In today's discussion, we are mainly focusing on the case you are seeing on the screen. And so let's go through some of the important points of this case. Starting with the first point, the important point that you can see on the case is this is a 60-year-old Aboriginal man. Now, I want you to pay attention to this. Why do you think they specify that this person is an Aboriginal man? Because in case of Aboriginal health, it's always a good idea to ask the person if they would like Aboriginal health liaison officer to be present during the consultation or if they want them to be involved during the management part. That's why they include this information. So when you'll be talking to a patient, it will be a good idea to ask them at some point where you find it appropriate whether they would like an Aboriginal liaison officer to be present uh, for the management or for the consultation. That is the reason it has been given. So if you ignore this point, you may not fail, but this is one point that shows that um, you don't have the understanding of the patient demographics of Australia and some of the sensitive issues that we have to deal with. The second thing is uh, this patient has already had consultation with the urologist. So that means we don't really need to do um, the um, breaking the ice or we don't need to do a spike here. So those of you who do not know spike approach, it simply means that whenever you are breaking the bad news, you have to go through certain steps so that you can empathetically deliver the message to the patient. And if you do not know what this spike stands for, then it, S is called the setting, P is checking the perception of the patient and inviting the patient for discussion using your knowledge to explain to the patient and being empathetic. I'll not get into the details of this, but those of you who want to learn more, maybe you can explore more about this. You can search about this and read about it. It's really important that you know this for your exam. The next thing is um, the case has mentioned here that uh, prostate cancer has already been explained to the patient, so we don't have to do that. And um, there are some additional findings, like the first one is PSA level is this, Patient has adenocarcinoma, glucine score is 7, and they have already checked for metastasis and they could not find it. And then lastly, patient has urinary tract infection. So these are the points you'll be touching during your counselling. Now, all of us know that our counselling cases, especially if we are counselling about a particular condition, goes through five Cs, right? So they are condition, so you talk about the condition, then you try to tell the patient what caused it. And then after that, you talk about the complications or commonality. Um, sorry, um, you first talk about the clinical features and then talk about complications and um, commonalities. So let me change the position here. So you talk about clinical features, then you talk about complications and commonality, 
and then after that you talk about the course where you can talk about the management options investigations to be done if they have not been done and how it will be managed so this is the usual uh, framework but what we need to know is this is a general framework for you to remember to include the important information but you always have to personalize the message as much as possible or whenever and wherever it is possible and that will help you to pass the exam one of the reasons many of us come um, usually fail in counseling station is because we give the general message but we don't personalize the message enough what it shows is that you have the knowledge but you do not know how to use the knowledge to um, deliver the information for the patient my patient doesn't want to know for example what glucin score of 8 9 or 10 is but he definitely wants to know what glucin score of 7 means in his case so for him it is more important for uh, him to know what glucin score of 7 means in terms of long term outlook rather than explaining to him what is 6 what is 8 and what is 9 now i'm not saying that you don't need to explain those things or you should not explain those things but what i mean to say is for the patient it's more important to know what these findings mean to him and while explaining that you can include other additional information as well depending on how much patient wants to know and i'll show you how to do that in a minute so this is one important thing to remember always think from the perspective of the patient try to think what the patient wants to know or what the patient would be interested in knowing and again the other thing is you may have heard that you are actually doing this for the examiner no the examiner knows how to analyze you based on the rubrics given to them and these rubrics are prepared by um the experts after brainstorming after collecting data from pilot stations so they know how to analyze your performance based on the information you have used and the way you have used them so as long as you are helping the patient by giving them the right kind of information they know that you have the required knowledge for the exam okay so you don't really need to do anything separately for the examiner as long as you are doing the right thing for the patient so i don't think anyone is going to fail the exam by doing the right thing for the patient just because they didn't explain those additional things to the examiner and trust me in the exam you'll not have that much time to explain things in detail so that you can impress the examiner if you can finish explaining to the patient that will be more than enough and you'll get good score because that's what i did in the uh, in the cases where i had to explain the investigation to the patient so i had ecg case where i had to explain things i had findings of ultrasound in triple a case and i had to explain to the patient so basically what i did was first i explained to the patient what those investigations meant and then after that i explained about other additional things because that way i was making sure that i have first passed the exam and then i was thinking about the additional points okay so i hope i have made it clear now so talking about um the um counseling part itself in every c there will be some important key points for you to include the first one here is talking about the prostate cancer don't start explaining what is prostate cancer before explaining what is prostate so you will start by saying prostate is a walnut sized gland the reason you are mentioning the size is to let the patient know that it's quite small and it's in the neck of the bladder the reason you are mentioning this position is because you can tell later to the patient that when it increases in size it can block the neck of the bladder and can cause problem in the flow of urine that's why these two points become important for you to include in your counseling these are the key points then you personalize the message in your ga- case this gland has started growing without any control use your words use your language to explain the things but this is what you need to say and the tissue sample taken from this gland shows that it is a cancer we all know that the diagnosis of cancer can only be made by histological analysis we cannot use any chemical analysis or imaging studies to diagnose the cancer cancer is a histological diagnosis that's why you have to use these two key points and now your examiner knows that you know these things because you didn't say that psa was high and that's why we think this is the cancer or you didn't say that the glycin score was 7 that's why we think it is the cancer you just gave a very simple message to the patient that we did the tissue analysis and found this is cancer so it shows that the, the candidate has the knowledge that the diagnosis of cancer can only be made through the biopsy then after that you explain to the patient the causes this is the part where you explain to to the patient what the causes are right so again just tell a few causes but try to personalize the message what that means is you tell the patient that this tends to happen usually when people are older and also is very common in black ethnicity 
But if you have had a family history of prostate cancer or history of other cancers which run in the family, then you have high risk of having prostate cancer as well. And then if you have any information from this team which tells you that this could be one of the risk factors in patient's case, you can include that in the message. For example, let's say that patient had his father diagnosed with prostate cancer. You can say that in your case, because your father had prostate cancer, it increased your risk of having the prostate cancer. So this is the connection between your knowledge and patient care, right? So this is how you're showing that you have the knowledge to explain the right information, right message to the patient. Then we go to the next point. Um, how does it present? So this is the clinical feature part. So the third C. So generally, uh, prostate cancer, if the prostate is small, may not show any symptom. But when it starts increasing, as I told you earlier, it's on the neck of the bladder. So it starts compressing the neck of the bladder and the urine uh, cannot flow out that well. So you may have um, symptoms such as um, you may need to go to the toilet more frequently, you may need to go to the toilet urgently, or you may need to get up many times uh, during night to go to the toilet. And it will be difficult for you to pass the urine as it is blocking the flow. And sometimes there can be dribbling of urine at the end as well. Uh, did any of these symptoms, did you have any of these symptoms? Now, you are not asking this to get the diagnosis. You are asking this to engage the patient in the conversation because you already know that patient has prostate cancer and now whether or not patient has these symptoms is not going to change anything. But the reason you are doing this is because you are now engaging the patient in the conversation. So you are not the only person talking there. So you are not lecturing the patient, but you are having a conversation with the patient. So the patient might say that, yeah, I had this and this symptoms. And you can say, yeah, so this was because of this. And sometimes when the um, block is, uh, is um, um, and then you, exp I'm sorry, and then you explain to the patient that, and sometimes this stasis or sluggishness of urine flow can lead to infection. And in your case, we have also seen in the investigation that you have, have urinary infection, which is probably because of the blockage of the urine. And then you explain to the patient what happens if it is treated and what happens if it is not treated so that the patient knows what to do. So you explain to the patient that this cancer has a good prognosis. That means we can control it and we can also treat it and keep it under control. Try to use the language that patient understands here. So for the patient, this is the most important part. I have cancer, so what does this mean? Am I going to die tomorrow? Am I going to die in three months? Or am I going to survive for a long time? What will happen to my quality of life? Will I be able to live a good life or not? So these are the points you need to include rather than using any technical information. So you tell the patient that, so this cancer has a good prognosis. We have effective treatment options available. And most people are able to live a good and quality life. So if you say this, then patient will perhaps be happy. Patient will be more assured. And your job is to assure the patient during this counseling. And this is one point that many of us forget. So we explain to the patient about the treatment options, like what happens and so on. But we haven't told the patient what is going to happen to his quality of life. So you have to explain that. So you have to say that if we do not provide proper management, it can spread. And if we, you are not in a monitoring program or if you are not um, um, uh, getting help from the healthcare providers, you may not know until it is too late and it will be difficult for us to treat at that stage. That is the reason why we start the treatment early and with the early treatment, it is quite effective and it is quite um, effective and we can control the cancer in early stage. Then you signpost. Signpost means when you move from one important part of the counseling to another part, you let the patient know where you are heading to. So you tell the patient, now let me tell you about the results of the investigation. Do you have any question for me so far? Do you want me to clarify anything? So patient asks you something, you answer, otherwise you move on. Now, you know that the patient and the specialist did some blood test and he also took a sample of the tissue from your prostate gland. Do you remember that? You are asking this question again to engage the patient and patient might say, yeah, they did this and this this time ago. So again, so we have now results available for those tests as well. And I'll explain them one at a time. Let me start with the blood test. So in the blood, we looked for a chemical that we call PSA or prostate specific antigen. Whenever you are using any abbreviations, explain them to the patient. Do not use just the abbreviation. 
first explain to the patient and then after that you can keep using that abbreviation so you can say that so we looked for a level of a protein in your blood called prostate specific antigen or PSA this comes from the prostate and usually when the prostate size increases the level of this chemical also increases so it indirectly tells us that there can be there could have been the growth of prostate now the growth could be a benign growth and could be a cancerous growth as well and that is the reason why we had to take a tissue from your prostate gland and when we analyzed the tissue we found that you had a cancer and the, um, the, the type of cancer you had is called adenocarcinoma or the cancer of glands now so you have explained this much to the patient in a very simple way so now you go to the patient and you tell the patient the next thing sorry i don't know what is going on here okay and um, when they took this tissue now you explain to the patient when they uh, analyzed the tissue they also tried to find out the common pattern of these cancerous cells and they in used a scoring system called glisten score to find out how aggressive the tumor is in your case they found it to be 7 which is considered intermediately aggressive or intermediate grade so this is the most important point for patient to know before explaining what is 6 and what is 8 9 and 10 this is something that you need to explain to the patient so it's intermediately aggressive tumor and then should you explain about 6 and 8 9 10 as well ask the patient do you want me to explain this glisten score in more detail to you then if the patient says yes please then you explain because this way you can assess the depth of information patient wants don't tell the patient the things that they are not interested in learning now if your examiner really wants to hear these things he must have already told the role player to ask the doctor for more information if he offers that so if you explicitly ask the patient um like do you want to know more they may say that do you think i should know more if they say do you think i should know more then you will explain if they say no doctor i'm all right that means they know that you will not have information to explain everything that's why they have instructed the role player not to ask for that information if you don't ask this question what will happen is you will explain to the patient this information for which you are not going to be assessed and perhaps you will miss the other things that you will have to talk about for example the management part that's why it's always a good idea to ask the patient about the depth of information they need now so you you are explain to the patient if what the glisten score is if they want to know more and here you have the explanation you can read it and you can explain it to the patient i'm not going to explain it now now the management so when you are talking about management the method the the style the approach that i use is i always give the overview first and then i ask the patient do you want me to explain these things in more detail here also what i'm saying first is first is who will be involved in the care of the patient so you will say multidisciplinary team and don't just say multidisciplinary team try to explain as much as possible who will be in this team so you will say that i'll be your general practitioner coordinating your care and then there will be urologist the doctor who will do the surgery if needed and the cancer specialist who will provide you with the treatment options and will explain these treatments and their side effects or anything that you need to know about in addition to this there will be cancer care nurse nurse as well and then most likely you will be going to the cancer center for your treatment so when you explain this to the patient then they know that how it is going to happen now where they will be going to now depending on the case you get in the exam if it has not already been done you may have to tell the patient that we will have to stage your cancer so you don't say we have to stage your cancer we'll have to say you will have to say we have to find out if your cancer has spread to other parts or not so we'll have to do some imaging studies of different parts of your body doing ct scan and then based on uh, that we'll decide what the treatment option will be for now i'm just giving you the general information about the treatment options but the option will be discussed with you your preference will always be considered and then it will be a tailored solution to your problem based on your preference so patient knows that they will tell me what are options are there they will ask me what i want to do and then only they will proceed with the the treatment so they know that then they they become more assured that they will have the options to discuss these things so then give the overview of the management so brief um, broadly talking about the management we have five different options here so using this this works like five options four options three options it makes it easier for people to follow you so you say that we have five different options the, uh, the first and foremost thing for us to do right now is 
We will treat the infection because you have the urine infection with antibiotics. And then you will have to take this antibiotics for seven days. After that, I'll review you. But in addition to that, we'll also have to treat your cancer. For cancer, we have the option of either waiting and seeing. So we have two different options here. Wait and watch or active surveillance. Wait and watch is when we are just when we just examine you your back passes to see the size of the gland and we measure the level of PSA I told you about earlier. And if there is any change, then we decide what treatment option to go for. The other option is in addition to these two things, we also take a tissue sample every year to see if there has been any change in the grade of the cancer. So this is called the wait and watch and active surveillance option. In addition to this, we have the pharmacological option where we use the hormonal therapy. Basically, we try to either reduce the level of testosterone hormone or block its action because it's responsible for prostate growth. The other option we have is the radiological option where we use the laser or radiolog uh, ra this radiological rays to destroy the cancer from either outside or by putting a small seed inside your prostate which locally destroys the cancer. And the other option is surgery where we take out the prostate so that... Um, that we, we take care of the cancer and we have different approaches. Now, your specialist will discuss all these options with you and will also tell you about the side effects. Generally, the side effects are there will be a um, decrease in the level of the male hormone testosterone that may reduce your desire for sex, that may reduce your muscle mass, and that may make your bone thin. But every option has advantages and disadvantages which will be discussed in detail. Or if you want me to discuss these things in detail, we can schedule another appointment where we can discuss all these treatment options with their side effects. Because it will not be possible for you to talk about all these things in detail with the patient in this visit. And I have this option, um, I have these details here. If the patient says, can you tell me more about this particular option, then you can explain that particular option to the patient. Or you can ask, do you want me to explain any of these options in more detail to you now? Or do you want me to explain all of these options in detail to you now? Because they know that you will not be able to finish everything in time. They will tell you that, uh, can you tell me more about this one? Or they may say, no, I'm all right for now. Remember, your intention here is not to burden the patient with overwhelming amount of information. Your intention is to help the patient understand that you'll be there to explain these things whenever needed. So as I said, watchful waiting is one option. Then we have active surveillance. You can... Pause the video and read about this on the slide or you can read it from anywhere you like. Then the option is surgery as well. And then we have the option of brachytherapy and radiotherapy where we are using the radiation to kill the cancer either from outside or from locally by putting the radioactive seeds inside. Or we have the hormone therapy which basically means blocking the um, testosterone or reducing its level. Usually we do it through the medicine and sometimes we can also do the uh, orchidectomy where we just take out the testes so that the hormone will not be produced at all. At the end, always make sure that you also include the NCLA services and support available to the patient. So you can see that we have a lot of things to talk about here. So when we get into the details of any one of them, we may not have enough time to cover all of them. And our main approach as general practitioner is to let the patient know about the overview of the management rather than talk in detail about any of the options because that's something the specialist is going to do or the on oncologist is going to do. So ancillary services, what options patients have? So you let the patient know that living through the cancer is a unique experience and can be overwhelming. But I want to let you know that there is support available for you and for your family members as well. In fact, involving your friends and family in your care can help you and can help them to deal with this. So for you, we have the support services. I will give you the reading materials to read about them. And we have different organizations which can provide you with the information as well as support. So we have government websites like Cancer Council Australia or, sorry, Cancer Australia. We have Cancer Council Australia. We have Prostate Cancer Foundation of Australia, which can provide you with information and support. And for the family members, there is Carer Gateway, which also can help them understand about your condition. Or if you want me to explain to your family members about your condition, I will be happy, more than happy to do that. You can bring them in the next consultation and I will be happy to explain this to them as well. So this is how you will move through the different steps. So let me summarize everything I have told you. You start by telling the patient what prostate cancer is. Then you explain to the patient what causes prostate cancer and try to correlate that with patient's risk factors 
Then you talk about the clinical features. And again, you ask the patient if they have any of those clinical features and you try to, you know, um, correlate that with the patient so that you engage in the conversation. Then you go on to the discussion of the investigation or in interpretation of the investigation where you explain each investigation in brief and simple manner, but you ask the patient if they want to know more about that so that you can assess the depth of information they want. Then you go to the management, you give the overview of the management first, you ask the patient if they want to know more about that. And then if they say yes, then you'll explain that again. So basically, this is how you move through everything. The important thing at the end is always tell them that there is ancillary services available, support available. And if possible, let the patient know that, yes, it's quite difficult for our, anyone to grasp all of these things at once. So if, and then this is not what, this is not my intention as well. So if you need more information at any time, I'll be here to explain these things to you. Or you can use any of the support, service, support services to get more information. And this is how you give a beautiful closure to your consultation. And ask the patient if there is anything else they want to know. Mostly they will say that, is there anything else I should know? That doesn't mean that they are assessing you. They're just uh, not um, telling you any specific things and they are letting you, uh, they are giving you an opportunity to uh, explain to them if there is anything you would like them to know. So this is how you will go through it. So I know this has been a long video because this is the first video I'm making without doing the live session. And I wanted to explain my approach at the same time. Uh, while explaining about the prostate cancer. With the next video will be about epilepsy and driving, which will be shorter than this because I'll only be talking about how to do the case and I'll not be talking about the general approach. Let me know how you felt about this video. If you have any feedback for me, please let me know in the comments. If you want me to cover any particular topic, let me know in the comments and I'll keep making videos. Most likely this week we'll not be, making, uh, we'll not be doing any live sessions, but I'll let you know about the live sessions as well. All the best for your exam. Thank you.